Hello friends, welcome back to my stack. I am your friend Ashish Parthi, Microsoft Architect. In today's session, we are going to discuss about the new feature which is Teams added to the AnyPoint platform under Access Management. So let's discuss why this feature is added and how it's going to help us. Okay. So if you are not aware of that, roles is going to duplicate and that is going to be you know replaced with the Teams. Okay. So let's discuss in detail. Let's start with the use case. So let me talk about the use case first, and then we'll see how that use case can be achieved with the help of Teams feature. Okay. So let's say you want to mimic your organization structure. Okay. And you want to manage the permissions and team membership as your, your organization group. That means you have scalability in your mind. And based on that, you wanted to handle or manage those permissions of the users or your any point platform user. Then you are looking for something which is very easy where you can directly, you know, uh, add the users to the appropriate team using email invitation. Okay. So this kind of use case is achieved by the new feature called Teams. Okay. Let's see in detail what are the key points we supposed to consider when you're creating a team structure, okay? Your organization team structure. So let's start uh, the example of a use case itself, okay? So when you're creating team structure, then each member of your organization, okay, is a member of your group. So when you start creating uh, teams, in, then you'll see the first team that is called a root team, okay? So with your, you know, uh, topmost business group is there, right? We call it org. With that, you'll get a root team. And all the members of your group, you know, organizations will be part of that group. You won't see any permissions, you need to explicitly add, okay? Second point, that your team structure should reflect the structure of your organization. Then it will help you, then if you have scalability in mind, then this structure will help you where to add the new team or where to add the new user. Okay, seamlessly. Okay, team name should be you know unique across your organization definitely because when you're creating a structure, all the team names should be unique. Then your organizations can have two thousand teams. You can create two thousand teams under your you know team structure. Your team can be nested up to ten levels. So you, you so as I said, these teams are in hierarchy nature. So you can go till ten levels including your room. You can create teams without adding members. So if you have, so you can go with the you know, blueprint and create all the teams first. And then once the onboarding started, you can add the you know, users to those respective teams appropriate teams. Every child team inherits a permission. So when you create a team structure, you, you start with without members, okay? And then you assign the permissions, proper permissions to the each and every team. Okay, and you want to keep, uh, you know, keep something in the parenting. Okay, so some some global governance policies you wanted to keep. Okay, and those permissions you can assign to the root team, and from the root team everybody will inherit. So some global permissions you wanted. Okay, for example, all the organization users should have design center access. Then you don't need to go to each and every team and assign that. You can keep it in the root team. Okay, and then everybody will inherit from there. Now we can see the features of the team. Okay, so like business groups, teams also will be in hierarchy, uh, you know, structure. But in business group, you cannot inherit anything from the parent business. Okay, but in teams case, yes, teams are inheriting permission from the parent. Okay, teams name must be unique across the entire. Yeah, we have discussed this point. Manage part. Or all of your unique uh, any point platform organizations in one simple and global. So from this team section, you can see your complete organization structure and all the users to the appropriate team. So you'll get a global view here: who is where and what are the permissions assigned to that particular team. Okay, and you can delegate the team as administration part to the team members by assigning them a role called 
maintainers okay so whenever you add users to a team there are two options there whether you want to add that as a team member or as a team maintainer so team maintainer can do extra job something like removing changing or uh, you know removing team uh, removing team members or adding members adding teams like that okay and they can assign their role to other team members also manage users and team permissions across business groups in one click so when you add the business uh, when you add a child team or create a child team then you can see that like all the business groups in one section okay so that's part of demo i'll show you that their exchange assets this is the important uh, point we can uh, you know uh, take it from this a new feature that is you don't need to go to individual users and assign the permission Okay, so we are doing it as a team. We'll group users together based on the business specific right uh, need, and then share the exchange assets to the entire team rather than the end user, right? Then, as I said, like there are there are two types of roles assigned to the team member. That is team member and the maintainer. So let's see how maintainer can manage the users and child teams. Okay, so. then he can change the team name add or remove the members add or remove the additional team maintainers move the team under different parents this is really important for example in your organization let's say a reorganization happened okay and your team move from one to the other parent okay in that case if your maintainer is a part of those parent teams and there also he is a maintainer then he can move the child teams to different parents okay at last he can delete the team over one more feature if you have external idp configured with your any point platform for xso then group names in the idp those can be mapped to the teams okay and and if you have users belongs to multiple groups in idp and let's say those map to a single team then most of the permissions will be used okay for that team so for example let's say uh, for example if you if any of the users map in idp group means use a maintainer permission then the user is given a maintainer permission for the team as well okay so hope this is this is the uh, you know little information about the teams let's jump on to the demo part and see okay So let me go back to the AnyPoint platform. Okay. So before starting the demo, let let me show you my organization structure. So I have two business groups right now: it's a global and it's a master data. Okay. And this is a um, master organization training. Okay. So under training, I could see global and master. Okay. Then to find the team new feature, we need to go to the access manager. Okay. Inside the access management, we were discussing about the roles, right? Let me click on the roles. Now you see the roles is move under the business groups now, and these roles are going to deprecate. Okay, so let me go to the business groups now. Here, if you click on any one, here here you can see that roles are added over here in this business group. Okay, so as I said. Let me go to this is my ma uh, master or many under that I have global and master data. So these are the two in one uh, groups I have. Let me go ahead and jump on to the team. So we are clear now. Roles is going to deprecate. That's the reason he is added to the business groups. We go to the teams. Okay. So what we are going to do is so whatever team structure you are planning, that you need to create it over here. So let's create that first. So let me create. I have something in mind that is C4 team. So what I'll do is I'll add that C4 team first over here. Okay. Let me create. I don't want to add any members right now. So we'll create the empty team. So C4 team can create the assets. I'll go ahead and I'll add some permissions over here. Okay. So I'll just add a specific permissions here. So let me go ahead and click on Add Permissions. Now, what I wanted to do is for C4E, I wanted to give only API manager permission. So I'll go to the API manager. First of all, 
first of all before adding any permission to do that let me show you so there are two users i have in my organization and both the users see all the users will be able to see under the everyone at training training is my master organization so this is the root team everyone at the training this is we call it a root team okay and all the users of your organization will be part of this team okay and by default you won't get any permissions assigned to this root team that means none of your user can do anything okay unless you have organization admin permission okay so definitely one of them have, will be having the org admin permission but if you don't have that then you won't be able to do anything okay so all the users should be part of this root team now in my organizations i have a governance policy saying that any user okay or all the users of my organization should have design center permission okay so what i do is i go ahead and this root team as a global level there has to be design design center developer permission so i am giving this okay to everyone in my organization so i go ahead and i say i have three business groups master and then two i have created by say everyone okay all the business groups and team so i have given permission to this so now I, my root team is having permission that is global okay and if i'm creating any child team over here then go ahead security is there now let me check whether those are added or not see you can see by default i have not added any permission to my security i have the default permission as a design center automatically inherited from the parent okay so let me go ahead and for security i'll add the api manager okay. so i give all the api manager permissions to this guy okay. let's go ahead and again here all three business groups so all three business groups you can see that one thing that is what the global we we are uh, we were discussing in the slide sessions and then all the users under the root team that is also global view of your organization right let me go ahead and next here you can see that you will see environment here okay so now you can select the environment let me select all here all here all here. okay you can go with your requirement okay i'll just go so now say you can view this and say yes add the permission okay now you can see that one in design center that is coming from your if i hide it see so if you wanted to see only what permissions i have assigned from my you know my team specific team then you can see like this and what permissions you have inherited from your parent then you will come from here in the next line okay so let me add the child team over here so that we can see that demo part of moving child team to other team okay so i am adding child team to this so i'll add uh no in called mustache here in under c4e i have added okay create it. i don't want to add any members right now so in here i'll just say <coughs> permission i'll assign the permission so now you can see that see so four in api manager one in design center one in design center we have assigned it to root team and four in api manager we have assigned it to c4e team both the things are getting inherited over now as part of this i'll add a permission i'll say that okay boss you can have a run time permission also so i'll go here and i'll assign i don't want to use a specific here i'll just say go ahead and assign all the run time permissions for here again all the business groups go ahead. okay all the environments now run time specific permissions are assigned In this must act team. So now the users, if I add to must act, those will be having API manager permission, design center permission, and runtime manager permission. If I add the users to C4E team, this guy will be having only API manager and the design center permission. Okay. So based on your requirement, now you can add the users to specific team. Okay. So let me go ahead to my root team and I want to add 
so child team was here already i added people here i'll add one more team here let's say i'll add the global okay. and since i am in group team so i don't have option to select a different parent let's go ahead okay here you can see in global see design center permissions are already added okay i'll go ahead and i'll say add the team manager permissions over here select all next Now, one more feature I want to tell you. Now, you can go ahead to the, the you know, till 10 levels here. You can go uh, keep on adding 10 childs. You know, if you wanted to go in hierarchy, you can go ahead and add 10 levels. Now, let me show you. Let me go ahead and add members. Okay, so there are no members in the global. Let me add the member. So, as I was talking about, there are two types member and maintainer. So, maintainer extra. So, I'll go ahead and add this guy as a maintainer. Okay, create that team. Okay, so this guy is a maintainer now. Now, there is one more. I have two users. Okay, so, I'll add this guy as a member. So one maintainer and one member. Any point of time can make it this guy also maintain. Okay. Now let me go back to my C418. Writing C418. I'll add a member with here also. Here I'll add only one member, that is this guy, and I'll make him a maintainer. Create. Okay. I'll go to child team of this team, and here I'll add a this guy as a maintainer so because of specific reason i'm adding this user as a maintainer because i wanted to show one thing okay now this guy is a maintainer here also in c4 also okay and inside the global team also okay so let me go to my c4 team right team here first time and go to the settings Okay, so this child team now you can move to a different path. Why? Because you you are the maintainer in this global also, and you are the maintainer in the root team also. So you can move this to any one of them. Okay. So let me move this to the because in future, let's say your organizations reorg and you want to move this team to a different, you can easily do this if you are a maintainer. Okay. In the other parent okay. So now changes are saved. This you can see under global. Now you can rename also. Okay, if you go ahead and rename it, you can rename the name. Okay. Now if you want to go to the global inside the global, you added two members. You can go ahead and remove also because you are a maintainer, right? Okay. So all these features you can see in the training. And as I say, you you are getting a global view over here. So from one section, you can you can see your complete or metastructure. structure. You can assign uh, the permissions to a specific team. You can add the members properly, okay, to the specific team, okay. And you can see the multiple groups from here directly, okay. So when you are when you are adding child team, right, you have seen that all the groups, business groups are you know coming in the list. You can see that, okay. So that's all from this session. I hope you liked it. So hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share with your friends. Thank you. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye bye.